There's been a number of changes to the general residential and neighbourhood residential zones that will be important uh, for your clients to know about. Yep. Um, the probably four main changes. Uh, one was to remove the two dwelling cap on yep. sites zoned neighbourhood residential zone and now there's no upper limit on dwelling numbers in the neighbourhood residential zone. Yep. Um, the other change was around height limits, mm -hmm. so they increased the um, mandatory height limit from 8 metres to 9 metres in the neighbourhood residential zone yep. um, and they've imposed a two-storey limit as mm -hmm. part of that height limit as well. In the general residential zone yep. um, that had a nine metre discretionary height limit mm -hmm. and that's been now replaced with a 11 metre mandatory maximum height limit yep. and uh, similar to the neighbourhood residential zone they've imposed a three storey uh, limit on dwellings yep. in that zone. Uh, the other big change too was uh, the garden area requirement right. and uh, so the state government has introduced a requirement for certain size lots mm. uh, to uh, be provided with a, an amount of land set aside for garden area. Right, okay. And that's a, a mandatory requirement as well. I think the, the point to remember about uh, height limits is that they're now mandatory. Right, okay. So whereas you could vary the height limit in the general residential zone, um, you know, in many cases without any upper limit, mm -hmm. uh, now there is. Yep. Uh, uh, an upper limit mm -hmm. um, and the other thing too of course is that whilst the 11 metre height limit is the default uh, height limit for most uh, area zone general residential the council can impose a different limit okay. uh, through a schedule to the zone right. so okay. there might be a different upper level expressed in a schedule to the general residential zone. The garden area was a requirement that um, um, uh, planners weren't expecting to see introduced into the planning scheme and it requires a certain percentage of site area to be set aside for garden area. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a sliding scale so uh, lots of 400 to 500 square metres in area they must provide 25% uh, of their site as garden area. Mm -hmm. Lots of 501 to 650 square metres uh, they're required to provide 30% uh, Right. of the site as garden area and then sites above 650 square metres the requirement is 35%. The challenge for, um, for practitioners at the moment is to determine what garden area uh, is. Yeah. On this, the image on the screen you can see that it's the front and backyards of that site so typically the parts of the site that would be set aside for private or secluded private open space are included in the garden area calculation. But there's also a very detailed definition at Clause 72 of the planning scheme that sets out precisely what is and what isn't garden area. I do expect that the tribunal is going to be asked to rule on certain applications to determine whether a, a particular part of the outdoor area is or is not garden area. So I'd encourage developers out there to get some professional advice and same too with building designers and architects um, before they complete their drawings to submit them to the council to make sure they comply with the requirement. What about the restriction on the number of dwellings? Is there anything to elaborate on that? That's a, um, I think a very important change that uh, many landowners need to know about and it might be that in the past you might have had a very large site and we've certainly seen some sites in um, the northern parts of Melbourne where they might be a thousand square metres, they were previously zoned neighbourhood residential, you could only get two dwellings on yep. that site. Mm. Uh, with the removal of that dwelling cap, mm. um, subject to garden area requirements of course and other considerations like neighbourhood character, car parking and off-site amenity, uh, now you might be able to get a significantly increased yield okay. on those sites than what you would otherwise have been able to do. So some sites really that weren't um, available for medium density housing now are. And what's the best way for our viewers to get in touch if they'd like to know more? Yes, yeah, Dan, thanks. Well, look, uh, give me a ring. Uh, my contact details are on the screen. We're very happy to assist if we can. Um, look forward to your call.